Welcome back from the break. We had a lovely recitation from Brother Ibrahim Ansari and hope you enjoyed that. And now we're going to be talking about a topic um, with our um, specialist, um, Brother Bilal Ali, who's going to just help us understand more about anxiety and a term called generalized anxiety disorder, which um, we'll, we'll learn more about. I haven't actually personally heard of that myself. So firstly, welcome, Brother Bilal. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum, Mr. Zara. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. good, thank you very much. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. Looking forward. Good, 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 good. good. Um, yeah, so as I explained in the beginning, um, I haven't heard of generalized anxiety disorder. Um, anxiety is something that a lot of us will go through on a daily basis, can I say, or mm -hmm. perhaps on a you know, regular basis. Um, but you know, perhaps we can go into sort of what, what are the signs of anxiety and what is specifically generalized anxiety disorder? So an generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD as it's known, is one of the anxiety, one of the members of the anxiety family. So you know you have things like people have heard of phobias, mm -hmm. um, of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, people have heard of things like panic attacks. So generalized anxiety disorder sits within that family under the umbrella of, um, of the, general the wider umbrella of anxiety. And it's um, quite, or fairly common, really? fairly common, yeah. And is it something that develops from having um, regular bouts of anxiety or is this something that's just a different diagnosis completely from sort of people generally having, like I said, we, we, I could have anxiety mm -hmm. every day about something, uh, but is generalised anxiety disorder something that's developed over time or is it something that's triggers it? Yeah, it's a little bit different. So we all have the capacity to be anxious. And what does anxiety mean? Fear, essentially, it's talking about fear of a future event. So um, some people, they have a specific thing like social anxiety in terms of mixing and whatever. And this is a particular kind of anxiety disorder specific to them, the interactions, talking to strangers, talking to new people, being in social situations. They find it difficult. Um, but all of us can be anxious if we were at the last minute, maybe asked to give a presentation at work mm -hmm. or to meet, meet somebody, a guest turns up, somebody turns up to your house and says, oh, I've got a, a particular guest with me, accompanying me, and it's somebody that you don't know. You might come a little, you know, mm -hmm. oh God, the place or whatever. We, a, a certain level of anxiety just in response to that trigger. But uh, anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder is something that quite, um, is quite, intrusive in terms of how it affects a person's life it can be it impact them in a bigger way and it's something that won't just be in response to a minor thing and disappear it's, it's quite there mm -hmm. chewing away or more intense than other times but chewing away for the best part of the, the, um, their lives really so yeah. it, it's something that can it be overcome or i mean are there techniques to help people or is it something that you know you once you get it you've got to then have sort of a, a a way to overcome it at that point? Certain forms of anxiety, some people mm. take, uh, they are given um, antidepressants or other okay. types of medication, um, certain mood regulating medications, which I, I don't prescribe, I don't deal, but I'm aware of that people take particular types of, sometimes they prescribe particular types of medication, even mm. from the, their GP, it doesn't have to be from a psychiatrist, from an actual mental health specialist in that respect, but even a GP can, can sometimes uh, diagnose a medication for people with anxiety. However, um, there are other forms of help, mm -hmm. talking therapy in general, the different types of talking therapy that exist, or CBT, cognitive behavior therapy in particular is quite preferred. Sometimes people can find help from self-help books, these type of books which give you mm -hmm. um, emotional, mental, um, various tasks to do, actions to do, um, um, sometimes even apps. There's mm. even mindfulness apps breathing techniques, different things that can help the person to, you know, arrest the symptoms and, and actually l learn how to calm themselves. So what kind of techniques would you, like, just like you've mentioned, um, sort of talking therapy, CBT, um, and even breathing techniques, but I really mm -hmm. think sort of like how you would say if somebody's thinking, oh, what would I, and, you know, what, what can I do to help myself? What kind of techniques are yeah, there? Yeah, so one of the first things um, that I would, I could say that is, it's, it's non-chemical, it's non-intrusive, it's mm -hmm. just about, focusing the mind and the thoughts and being paying attention to the breathing is mindfulness. You can sometimes put on a, you can download various apps, some you pay for, some are on a monthly subscription and they give you um, particular exercises to do throughout the month and, uh, and you can monitor yourself in terms of measuring your mood on a scale of one to 10, how anxious are you? Um, and it will ask you various questions so you can kind of chart your progress or, or, or maybe even lack of progress or whatever the case may be. And it gives you almost like mantras or sort of daily lessons mm. to reflect on. But breathing techniques, within those mindfulness apps as well, they, they often have breathing techniques. Sometimes playing, um, you know, um, 
audible stimuli, certain yeah. sort, sort of sounds. It could be the sounds of the sea, um, or there's different sounds that you know people are finding relaxing. So sounds of um, waves crashing off of 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 the, of the sea or um, a forest or whatever mm. it is, and, um, and but breathing and f helping people to focus their mind on things that kind of inspire calm. Once we change our breathing, we can change our kind of physio physiology mm -hmm. and change our heart rate and bring that down. Because one of the symptoms is mm. of, of, of GAD, of generalized anxiety, is one of the physical symptoms is that racing or irregular heartbeat. Okay. Um, I was just going to ask you that um, when somebody goes through the symptoms of um, you know, having GAD, um, what do people have different kinds of symptoms? Is it something that's quite, you know, is it quite, there's a common one or is it sort of people, different people have different Yeah, so there's, there's physical reactions. symptoms. Mm. So it could be um, dizziness, lightheadedness, um, churning, churning of the stomach, um, palpitations or irregular heartbeat, possibly sweaty palms. Um, as, as I said, lightheadedness, things of that nature. That, those are some of the physical symptoms and they're, and they're quite common. In terms of their mood, it can become quite irritable. You can imagine if you're laboring with these symptoms for mm. over a period of time or frequently, it can become quite tiring. So people can become irritable because right. it may even interrupt their sleep. Um, in terms of their thinking, people with GAD often have, um, I wouldn't say intrusive thoughts, but the word I'm looking for is um, sometimes even racing thoughts. But there's a constant fear of dread. Right. Even if it's not directed at something specific, like I'm worried about giving this presentation, it's going yeah. to go wrong, I'm going to fall on my face. No, it's more like a, just this persistent feeling like something awful is going to happen. I feel, mm, you know, feel like something God. really bad is going to happen. It's kind of, as I said, persistent chewing away. That's yeah. they, Sometimes people wake up with those feelings. It's there in the background. Some parts of the day they're more aware of it. And maybe at night they might be aware of it again. But it's like it's pretty much those, some of the symptoms, if not all, are kind of present quite a lot of the time, if not mm. most of the time. Gosh, it sounds quite. Because I'm, I'm from my personal experience. I know when I'm, I, I get anxious, um, and perhaps it's you know before, like as you said, it's not necessarily presentations, but um, you know if I go for an interview or something, yeah, then yeah. I get that sort of yeah. churning of the stomach. But mm. it, and then as soon as you know your, um, you know you, your nerves calm, it the symptoms go, and you think the oh, event pass, yeah, and there's a sense of relief. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So almost really, like when people. Get off, I, I get don't off. have gad, do I? <laughs> no, no. I was going to say that sense of relief. Almost like when people are on an aeroplane and they might be a bit uptight oh, or yeah. quiet or whatever the case and when the plane lands they get all talkative about the holiday or they're excited about coming yeah. back home again but yeah. it's just that sense of relief because that the thing they were quite yeah. concerned or fearful of has passed but that, I, I that doesn't always pass just like that no and i was gonna say you just mentioned about planes and i remember going on a trip um last year and this lady was um she was laughing but she said to me i have anxiety and um apprehension flying mm -hmm. and we were traveling internally i think it was in iran and the planes are a bit smaller um, so she said, I feel really, and she started to hyperventilate and her family were around her and sort of say, calm down, it's okay. But um, it's not easy to understand when you're just a bystander, you know, you, you don't know what somebody's going through. No. But was she doing the best thing? I mean, that was obviously, or could she get medication for that kind of... Um, some people do. Mm. Some people are prescribed medication for flying. Or some people just, like I said, learn techniques because mm. the medication induces something chemically that with the power of thought we're able to do, or some of us are able to do. So people, some people... It, is too laboursome, so they might just just take take medication because that option's there. What would you say if somebody ha if they if somebody's concerned and they think oh I've, you know I I have anxiety that's sort of prolonged and it's you know and the actual cause of that anxiety perhaps is not such a, a you know huge task um, mm -hmm. for them. Do you think that they should seek help, sort of somebody like yourself, or go to the GP? How would you say would be the best? There's a number of ways they can approach that. I think before they even make a call to their GP. To, to, to get to get to discuss the issue further, um, I would direct them to say, for example, like the NHS website, okay, because it's quite it's quite reputable. They can, um, if say, for example, somebody hears what we're talking about and they think, hey, this might have struck a chord. Mm. I would say then, in that case, if you think you may have got, you may at least recognize some of the symptoms that we discussed. Um, you could go onto the NHS website and look at physical symptoms. Um, you know, psychological symptoms and other characteristics of it to see if you're ticking more than not, you know, mm. more. And if you tick, you feel like you're ticking quite a lot of mm. what you see, a lot of it applies to you, then the next protocol could be to um, 
make an appointment with their GP. Some people are quite, mm. uh, especially Muslims, can be quite a bit, let's say, worried about how does that go on my record? Does it mean yeah. I have a mental health problem and all this yeah. stigma? Now, everybody has mental health, whether it's good mental health or bad mental health or yeah. anywhere in between, just like we have physical health. But I know that there is a stigma in the community. So if people feel that like they want to go more of a private route, there are professionals who, who work in a more confidential way where information mm -hmm. um, is, there are some limitations to the confidentiality. Like if they feel like you're at risk to yourself yeah. or a third party, then they'd have to break confidentiality. But generally they can work in a more private way. Yeah. So you could, uh, for example, seek out a, a counsellor or psychotherapist on like the BACP website or the UKCP website. Probably if you stick to more recognised national what bodies. What are those websites it's for people who perhaps Yeah, like say, know. for example, the BACP, British Association of Counselling and Psychotherapy, or UKCP, um, United Kingdom um, Counselling or Psychotherapy website organisation, you know, okay. like you can... Yeah. They have they list therapists in your area. You can you know things like that. You can Google. So, but what I'm saying is that there's Find lots of people online. But yeah. if you go to like nationally recognised yeah. websites, and you 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 know you, you kind of know what you're, you're signing up for or what you're looking into. This person's been they're registered. They're yeah. they're registered or accredited or you know they've got some level of qualifications that are are nationally recognised as opposed to anybody fly by night. Do you have, what's the route usually? Do people tend to go to the GP via and then can't be refer, and they're referred on to people like yourself, professionals, or do people self-refer and then, you know, perhaps you would then say it would be if you thought there was um, perhaps extra help that the GP could give that you'd refer, say to them, see your GP? Not either, because sometimes people come to see me privately just because... Um they've been recommended by like another Muslim, for example, or just, or just a member of the public. So um, I'm happy to work with people, you know, do an assessment, do a screening process and take it forward from there. Um, or depending on what they're presented, I may still be happy to work with them, yeah. but I might refer them back to their GP because there's a complexity of issues where it might benefit them to yeah. still see the GP. We can work on, look at these emotional and psychological issues. However, You've disclosed, you know, mm. um, chest problems or other physical pro or other problems that would warrant you at least to be set. At least I would prefer for you to be the person to be assessed by the GP, and we get the all clear in that regard in terms of no physical problems or you know things like that. Because so. I'm just um, I'm I'm thinking that with the way you're saying that the, the symptoms can get quite severe for people, and yeah. if you're saying the chest pains and and. Um, you know, that's obviously you'd be quite concerned if it was if it was something that severe. Mm -hmm. But any last thoughts about sort of like what might help our viewers to get a better understanding about generalised anxiety and disorder or perhaps when not to worry and it's just quite okay to be these sort of like milder, well, anxious... I think I'd leave people with the, with the thought. Um, generalised anxiety disorder does exist. It can be very um, stressful and, and, and play a big part in people's lives in terms of being quite disruptive and you know, lead people to withdraw and avoid family and avoid friends because it's, it, it's more of um, dealing with uncomfortable and anxious situations. However, there is quite a lot of help out there and people do recover or learn to cope and adjust and you know, like live functional lives. So it's nothing that we need to be superstitious about or bury our heads in the sand. Yeah. The, the help is available. Yeah, and I think, yeah, like you said, I mean, some people may not even be aware it's um, you know, it's termed as any condition. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, I just get nervous, or it's just this. But actually, there's a there's a whole big chapter. Like I said, I haven't heard, and I, I read quite a lot. But this is, you know, I have never heard of generalized anxiety disorder. So perhaps other people are in the same boat. Um, and if you have any concerns, Brother Bilal said, please do, you know, research on the internet, um, and um, hopefully seek some help if, if you need to. For sure. Um, for sure. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, Inshallah, you have a blessed day ahead. Sure, sure, and um, we'll see you next another Monday morning. Um, now we're going to be heading off to the kitchen and we'll see what Sister Sana and Sister Fahima are cooking up.